Hello guys and welcome back to Lord of the Rings The Third Age. In the last part we met up with the dwarf uh, called Hathod and we began to fight the Watcher in the Water, also known as the giant octopus that lives in the lake just outside the mines of Moria. So, we got into a bit of a uh, start on him anyway and like in the last part, um, any melee attacker like uh, Barathor here, he cannot really lay a hand on this thing at all. Like, basically, he, he's basically just there to charge the other guys up, basically. Oh, jeez, I gotta use him again. Um, I guess leadership again, I guess. I could, company might, maybe. Actually, you know, it might be an idea to heal. Uh, find an item here that uh, heals the party. Uh, there we go. Uh, bag of the old Toby. HP and action points. Very nice. Okay, Elagos turn now. Okay. Okay, the octopus is about at a third of his health. Um, usually when you look over an, uh, an opponent, it'll show a little health gauge above its head. And you have to look pretty carefully, though, because it can be sometimes pretty hard to spot, because if I go pretty quick, it's pretty hard to, but... Uh, Jay's got to use Barathor again. Use another item, I guess. That's all we can really do is keep the guys all healed up. Action points all good. Uh, Loud Water Fury, I guess. Like I said in the last part, like it's kind of surprising that a Water Elemental attack actually does a pretty nice chunk of damage to uh, a creature that lives in the water. I find that a little strange, but eh, I'm not complaining. Like if, if her attack didn't do nothing. Oh, nice. He learned a new attack. Pierce Will. Very nice. Um, but yeah, if, if her attack doesn't do barely anything to do like, to this, like, if it didn't, then you'd probably be in a bit of trouble, because Elagos would basically be your only guy. Uh, Company Valor, if I remember correctly, this creates, so we, uh, all, al all your allies attack, attacks are more accurate, and the opponent cannot dodge as easily, so... Or no, sorry. Um, uh, the opponent has a less chance of hitting you, and you have a higher chance of hitting them. That's how that works. That's my mistake. Okay. Oh, nice. We got some nice items there. That's always helpful. Watch out. Those tentacles are powerful. Excellent. They're digging away in. He has opened the gate. Huh. I knew he was good for something. Okay, at least the uh, the Watcher opened up uh, a little hole for us to get into. Uh, we are now in a new area. Stand back! It shall be a dwarf who first enters Moria. The rumors are true. Balin has failed. My people have failed. This fight took place decades ago. Their bodies returned to dust. These great dwarf lords stood here for thousands of years, Elf. And this abomination took place before them. I do not find that amusing. Some small measure of their great power remains hidden here. I can feel it. Let me help you reclaim it. For your people. Okay, we are now in a new area of Western Moria. Cuts. Seven rings of power were given to the Dwarf Lords great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. But they were deceived by the Dark Lord, Sauron. And in time, their kingdoms fell into ruin. But the dwarves hold many secrets, and few are graced to share their language. The secret rooms of their ancient kings remain lost in these empty halls. It is your secret to find, my friend. Oh, always great with secrets. Um, okay, let's see if we have any new equipment here. Nothing for Barathor, nothing for Idriel, and nothing for Elagost. Nothing for uh, Hadlod either. Okay, uh, three of my guys here are leveled up from that, uh, the Watcher, so let's just go ahead and upgrade some of their little stats here. Uh, upgrade his speed and spirit, Idriel, uh, strength, I guess, and spirit, uh, with Barathor here. 
Um, okay, he has a lot to spend. Uh, two in a two in a attack, one in health, and one in speed. There's a little save pull here. That's always helpful. Don't have to fight that stupid octopus again. Yeah, what does this say? Okay, that's just mentioning uh, you can travel to other areas. That's basically what that said. Like, once you've been in one area, like, we, we just finished a region, so if you ever want to travel back there, you can just use one of these little save poles, and you can actually uh, go back there if you want. Like, uh, it can be a little bit helpful. Like, you can go back and, like, uh, level up a couple more times by fighting, like, more weaker orcs and stuff, but that's usually, it usually doesn't, it usually takes way longer to level up by fighting the weaker orcs anyway. Like, I, I never do it when I play through this game, but you can if you want to. Okay, what's down this little staircase here? Uh, more water. Uh, can we cross this, or what's the deal here? Oh, crap, something was waiting for us in the water. Uh, let's see what this thing is. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, jeez. They put in another octopus, really. Okay. Okay, so there are two of these that we actually have to fight. This is actually the last one we'll ever have to fight, though. Um, that's fortunate, because it actually took quite a while to fight that first one, actually. I got lucky in the end with, like, a couple crits, but that was actually just luck, really. Okay, uh, Haste of the Elves. I think I used it on Elagost, I think. Uh, yep. Okay. It'd be kind of pointless to use it on Barathor, really. Okay, set up a company Valor here. That way we hit easier, and we have a bigger chance of that thing missing. Okay, I got lucky there and hit Elagos with its tentacle whip. Uh, there's not really a reason to taunt it. I don't think it has any status moves that I'm aware of. I don't think it does. So it would be kind of pointless. Uh, should I use Wildwater Fury another Haste of the Elves? Um... I could use Haste of the Elves on myself, I guess. Um, I think that's actually what I just did there. That probably would be an idea, though. Uh, okay, yes, I did. Okay, it's going after Ridgerill now, and I got a bloody critical hit. That's bullcrap. Okay, Pierce Will. Uh, piercing Might? Yeah, Piercing Might. Okay, hit it with this. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's 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 hard to read the little font, which uh, the description of the attack. And it's at like the it's at the top of the screen there when you go over the attack. I'm pretty sure Pierce will. Well, actually, that was Piercing Might I used, I believe. Piercing Might, I believe, that reduces the target's melee armor class for uh, weaponry. So like Elagos bow attacks will do more to it now because its armor class to its, um, melee is now weakened. Okay. And I believe Piercing Will, the one that we upgraded earlier, or, not upgrade, we unlocked earlier, that, it decreases its, I think it's magic, or it's, uh, spirit armor class, like magical attacks, like, uh, Idril's Loudwater Fury, for example, that would do more. Okay, uh, so I have a company might here just so we hit it a bit harder. Okay, Elagost's turn again. Uh, aim shot, pierce will. Uh, I guess bullcraft, maybe creature bane seem to do a lot. Creature bane will do more to, like, uh, animals. Enemies, like, uh, oh, nice, double critical, holy crap, that did a lot. Nice. But yeah, creature bane will do more to, like, animals, and I, I guess this thing could count as an animal, so it will do a bit more to it, which is always helpful. Uh, let's see here. Ant Bark, Lembus, King's Foil. Uh, I think I'm looking for something that will heal the party. And maybe action points, that'd be nice too. Uh, what do we got here? Lots of items, wow. Lembus. Uh, I guess, yeah, we're still showing Belagos action points. And he has an attack that hits all of us, that sucks. Okay. Uh, hit this thing with a loud water fury. That might, I think, one more shot after that, and it'll probably be dead. Yeah, one more attack should probably do. Another creature bane should put it out. <coughs> I'm actually getting over a bit of a cold here, actually. 
That's why I haven't been uh, narrating or commentating lately. But luckily we killed that thing. That's good. Never have to deal with those octopus again. Ugh, but in the meantime of me being sick, I did get a lot of uh, recording done of other games, so that's always helpful. That's why I made that montage the other day. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are looking forward to a couple of those games. We've got another cutscene here. Very good. You have now entered the long dark of Moria. Moria is a lost civilization that spans many ages. And in the deep places of this world, foul terrors still dwell, filled with wrath and malice. <laughs> I expect you found the landscape changed since we recently passed through. That was the work of the Watcher in the water. For what good are words of opening, or enchanted doors for that matter against such ancient powers? In other words, a magical door is basically pointless against a giant octopus. Lesson learned. I'll remember if I ever build a house or a castle at any time that if I have a friggin' magical door for whatever reason, if for some reason we have better doors in the future, and if I have a giant octopus and a pool in the front yard, I will not put in a magical door if that's the case, because the octopus will destroy my, my precious door, so... Thank you, Gandalf. I've learned a lesson now. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Elagos got some new armor. That's always helpful. Better armor is always better, which is really helpful, actually, because Elagos' armor, like I said a couple parts ago, for some reason his armor seems to be a little bit weaker than that of, like, other characters. I don't know why, but uh, it, it just is. Like, there's nothing you can really do about it. But, oh well, we can make do with that. Um, now about Moria, um, it can be a little bit of a maze if you haven't played the game before, but like I've said a couple times before, I've beaten through this game, like, I think this is my fourth, my fourth or fifth playthrough of this game, and I basically more or less know my way inside and out of most of the game, Moria in particular, because... I know when I first played this game when I was like 9 or 10 years old, it was always like the hardest thing to do was get through Moria. But when I finally figured out how to do it, it actually became really easy. And it's one of those games where it just stays in your head basically forever. So, I know that I know Moria inside out. So, no chests around here. That sucks. Oh, there's one there. And it's booby trap. That's, that's great. Well, let's see what we're fighting here. Uh, a couple of wargs. There shouldn't be a problem. Wargs are a freaking pushover. Okay. Just two of them, too. Okay. Go the creature bane. That should probably do the most. Uh, aim shot, maybe. Okay. Let's see how much aim shot does. I think creature bane actually would have did more. Maybe I made a mistake when I was recording this or something. Creature bane probably would have did more, though, because they are wargs. Oh, uh, loud water fear take it out. Probably barely. Not, like, barely just not taking it out. Oh, wow. It actually lived that pretty impressively, actually. Uh, oh, jeez, wow. Yeah, I definitely probably should have did, uh... Oh, uh, Creature Bane on that, because it probably would have been dead by now, because it's taking hits like crazy. Okay, you got a critical hit on the stupid claw move. And they're gang-beating Idriel, and she's only down now. That stinks. Yeah, I don't know why am I keep using aim shot. That's crazy. I should just be using creature bane. I guess I could just do a basic attack on this one just to take it down. Don't want to waste any action points. That one's down now. Okay. Um. Uh, I guess guardian strike is my best bet on this thing. I've got a nice crit there. That's always helpful. Uh, probably just go ahead and heal Israel here, and that'll be the end of this part. Uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next part of Lord of the Rings of the Third Age.